ask a couple questions, and then Michelle, or whoever wants to talk, this is a conversation. Um, Artem, um, can you just tell us how you came to this story, how you met Olesia, the director, and what drew you to want to produce this film? Hello. Uh, so, thank you, uh, everyone who watched this film with us, and thank you who stayed for the conversation. I appreciate it, really. Uh, what about the story? I met the screenwriter, uh, and she told me uh, this story, uh, and I like it from the first words. Then she sent me the material, uh, and it was like a half year I was with this material alone, uh, trying to find someone um, who could uh, be a director of this film. Um, I do before my uh, period film, uh, historical period film about First World War, it's Kruti, 1918. Uh, if you know, it's about the Ukrainian students uh, who was fighting uh, against the uh, 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 Russian army again but in 1980, uh, and um, this was the second film, uh, I mean historical film I want to produce. I know that it's a hard job to make a historical film because you, uh, every time you, you find a different true story uh, and it's really difficult to make a true, true historical story, but uh, I think we, we did it because all this story was true, uh, all this happened in real life. Uh, so, um, when I met uh, Olesia, uh, she liked the story and uh, we started to work with this. Uh, and it's like two years of our work uh, and we just finished in 2021. We decided to go for the festivals and we have a lot of festivals for this film, a lot of Jewish festivals love this film. Already, I, I send all, all, all the material where we was, uh, and then <clears throat> we was planning to have a premiere this year uh, on the the Shedrick Day. I mean, it's in January, uh, and it's not so funny story, but uh, in 22 of uh, February we presented this movie in cinemas in Ukraine and uh, presented that we have a. A broadcaster, we have a distributor, and we planning to show it in December, and in today's start war, uh, nobody seeing that it could happen. Even uh, so, all my family is here, and uh, uh, we like trying to escape from Kiev, and I send them to United States of America first of uh, uh, March, and I stay in in Ukraine. Um, we never think that uh, the scenes from the movie could happen in our real life, for sure. But uh, as you can see in the movie, the girls and uh, the women singing in the shelters, all the same are happening now in Ukraine. Uh, people trying to, 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 to hide in the, in the metro, in the uh, shelters uh, from the Russian bombs. Uh, but they trying to stay optimistic, uh, but it's hard. All my all my way to to to, to United States was from the city which was bombed each day, and you can hear about the Vinitsa two days ago. Uh, the young girl was killed like four years, mm -hmm. and yesterday in Kharkiv was killed uh, a boy, 13 years. Uh, maybe you see the pictures, but we see this material every day. So uh, for me, it's like 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 being in a different world, you know, because um, uh, I, I need to combine two, two different worlds. A couple of days I was in Ukraine, and now I'm here with the movie. So I, I want to, to share my emotion with the movie I produced. I, I, I take a, a long life to, to, to have this movie, to, to spend these moments with my family. But then I understand that in two weeks I need to go back in Ukraine and uh, the war is not stopped and we don't know when it's stopped so we don't know uh, how long it will be and as you can see the Putin and his um, army they don't want to stop the, the Donetsk, Lugansk it's not the target it's, it's only a start 
they want to go further, they won't take Odessa, they won't take uh, Pridnistrovia, Moldova, maybe Poland. Uh, and as you can see, nobody wants to stop them. Uh, and I think, you know, we have a joke, uh, it's, it's not so funny, but we have a joke about NATO. So um, the NATO guy says that if uh, Russian Federation would just start something with one of the countries of NATO, they will start to fight against the Russia. But we, we say in Ukraine, if uh, Russia Federation starts from one country from NATO, so this country will be not from NATO. So NATO just... <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's bad joke, but it's, it's so like true, because NATO don't have any power. And now only Ukraine trying to fight against, uh, against uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. He mentioned this uh, in the start. I mean, <laughs> we, we really tried to find, fight with the enemies, uh, we, we collected all, all together, uh, I mean, movie producers, directors, I have an uh, organization, um, it's like a uh, humanitarian organization, charity fund, we're trying to collect some money to bought the ambulance machine, cars, we already bought 55 cars for the military guys, and 5 ambulance machines. Uh, cars, I mean. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, directors, uh, DOP, producers, all together trying to communicate with their friends all around the world to, to gather these funds and to, to, to help to the military guys. Because uh, land lease is not so fast, um, Germany is not helping a lot, and, and, and etc. But it's policy, I don't, I don't want to go to the policy, but it's it's the things it's happened now in Ukraine. So and we don't see the uh, any sh in, any sun in the end, you know. Uh, so that's bad. Thank you, Artem. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I mean, uh, even in this movie, we're trying to show that uh, Ukraine is different. So the woman, the Ukrainian woman, she take care about all kids. It's no matter if Jewish kids, Polish kids, uh, even German guy. Yeah. German yeah. boy, uh, and this is all about Ukraine. We never trying to invade someone. Never, all all of the time. We never try to to bother our neighbor boss, uh, separate. separate people. Never. So we just trying. We, we work hard always. We work hard. Uh, we we build our houses. We live. Uh, in happiness with uh, with our with our families, we don't try to to catch another lands to to have some more more more, but we know who did, and we know who always did this. Uh, that's why. So we need to defend. We never try to invent. In, 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 in vain. In, how how it's in vain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the big difference. So we have our language, and we don't try to, to promote it all over the world. We, we speak Ukrainians, okay. Uh, we, we have our culture, we don't try to, uh, to pro pro propaganda, propaganda this or, uh, or something, you know. So we don't, we don't believe in Tsar, we don't have any Tsar. We have a uh, Jewish guy who was comic, <laughs> and he's our yeah. president, and he's fighting uh, <laughs> till the end, I think. Artem, you know him. Maybe yeah, people I'm, would be interested to know that. You wanna... I don't vote for him, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's, it's funny thing. But but uh, I know him personal. Uh, uh, but I don't want vote for Poroshenko either. Uh, I, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, and I know that he wouldn't uh, give up because uh, I, I I know him personally and I know uh, how he feels like. And uh, when the United States or France started to say to him, "You need to evacuate from Ukraine and to be in a, like in safe place." He said, "No," and it was really hard days in Kiev those days, uh, and uh, a lot of people tried to kill him. Uh, I don't know if, if you know this, uh, yes. but uh, several times. yeah, several times. Uh, that's why. That's why uh, we are not any, I don't know, how, how they call us, uh, nationalist, uh, fascist, no? they're trying to demilitarize, de 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 yeah? 
but how we could be, as, as we talk with you, how we could be Nazi uh, nation if we have a Jewish president, uh, and I don't know, uh, half of the government um, Jews, or we have a Korean guy from uh, uh, gubernator of Nikolaev who don't say any words in Ukraine, but he's fighting against the uh, Russian invasion. By the way, related to Ukrainian language particularly, do you see now a big move towards speaking Ukrainian, learning Ukrainian? Because as I remember when I was in Kiev, and I know recently, the Russian language was still dominated on the streets and among the people, even who are fighting right now. Uh, to, be, to be honest, you can see the video from the war, and a lot of Ukrainian warriors speak Russian. It's not a problem. And to be <laughs> honest, in, in my family, we used to speak Russian, because we don't think that Russian Federation is own Russian language. Uh, yeah. yeah, and but now everybody trying to speak only Ukrainian, and we have a reason why. Because you know, uh, I read some interesting note. I don't know how to translate it. I will tell you in Ukrainian, and you will say thank you. Бо був такий допис, чому важливо наразі спілкуватися українською мовою, і всі знають, що відбувалося там в Бучі, в Ірпіні. І е, дівчина в Фейсбуці привела приклад, що е, ну, просто уявіть собі ситуацію, да? там, ви сидите в бомбосховищі вже там, тиждень, там, два тижні, е, без їжі, без води, і чуєте, що щось відбувається зверху, бом, ну, бомби перестали падати, і хтось зверху кричить. І тут уявіть дві ситуації. Там, є хтось живий, і чи є хтось живий? И ну, ваша реакция тогда, яка будет? Тут oh, yeah. разумеете? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can translate it easily. Uh, uh, you know what uh, everywhere is was a, like a uh, uh, Ukrainian language and what uh, Kiev and uh, Stavor started and uh, uh, people were talking Russian, Ukrainian. Uh, but you all heard about Bucha, about Irpin, what happened there, small towns uh, next near to Kiev. The uh, 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 Russians ki uh, practically destroyed those beautiful uh, towns and suburbs and uh, also killed uh, lots of people. Uh, and can you uh, imagine if you are in Kiev sitting in a subway and bombs uh, uh, falling there, not bombs, it was rockets. Uh, and at some point after a couple of weeks, when you're almost without food, without water, uh, you're scared as hell. And somebody from, uh, all of a sudden, it's a quiet. And somebody from the uh, ground, uh, uh, street the yeah, yeah. from above, uh, you uh, hear the voice in Russian. Is anybody alive? He down there? or you hear the same in Ukrainian. What will your reaction be yeah. if you hear it in Russian? What you will think? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So, so we now understand that uh, our language is our code and uh, it's, it's, it's very easy to, to know why. When we are uh, together in the United States and we are walking down the streets and we hear the Ukrainian words, we understand that it's Ukrainian there. But when we hear Russian words, we need to stop, to sing, to, to listen, and in a couple of sentences we will understand they are from Ukraine or they are Russians. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, as you know, even Russians trying to speak Ukraine, not to be uh, fighted in different cities, uh, and that's mean they're trying to, to have this code. I also want to add a little bit what uh, right now, also, you can uh, really uh, hear and understand the accent if a person is uh, speaking Russian but he is not from Russia at all, or he is really from Russia. It will be like that. You will understand where this person is from. Thank you, Vladimir. Yes. I, I, uh, phenomenal film. I mean, I was just totally overcome. You've done a phenomenal job. Um, I have a bunch of questions, but one of the big questions is, is this film being distributed in Germany and in France as well? I mean, does it have, is it, does it, do you have a version of this with German and French subtitles? They need to see this film. 
Uh, not yet, but we're planning to. We, we just, we was planning the festival story, you know? We, we finished this film when it, the COVID was, and we, we, we decided to wait, and when it's 2021, we decided to go with this film through all the festivals, uh, and, 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 then, uh, and then we would want to, to distribute it all over the world. And uh, now we have uh, English subtitles, but we're working on the Spanish subtitles, we're working on the German sub subtitles, uh, this film, one of the film from the Ukrainian Cinema Aid Marathon, which was launched uh, with all Ukrainian cinematographists. We uh, created this Cinema Aid Marathon through, it was started in Toronto in March, uh, and it was opened with uh, Carol of the Bell. Uh, we launched this marathon to gather some money for our phones to finish the films we have now. So because we have like 30 films on a different stage, which are uh, not finished because of the war, but we need to finish them to have the films to, to promote Ukraine in second, in, in next year and year after the next year, because uh, we need to be presented on all over the world, the festivals. So, uh, and because of this, we are now translated it even now on Korean language. and. Uh, uh, if everything go good, we will have this film on uh, Korea uh, in Korea. Uh, and the funny story: it was uh, the, the closing film in uh, Irish Galloway Film Festival, City Four. It's it's well known Irish film festival. Yeah. They choose Carol of the Bell, the closing film, and there was like a lot of people in 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 they they um, they invite me, main character, director, and one more uh, actress from this film from all over the world so they, they, they like put us together we was like uh, first time see each other during the world because I, I don't see the directors from the war start uh, and then uh, when the films end uh, it was a lot of people crying then and was the Chinese girl who was crying and I was in shock I just asked her why, why are you crying we understand something from this she said yes of course I'm from Hong Kong and we have the same problem with Chinese. So because they are afraid now that Chinese will invade the Taiwan and then next they invade Hong Kong. But she said, uh, you can fight, we cannot fight because we're only city and they invade us in one hour, like, like something or um, like in one day. So the problem is similar. And uh, some people are afraid of the China, some people are afraid of the Russian Federation, but mostly they are afraid that they will unite it together and and make the same like Russian Federation and Germany in, in this, during the Second World War. And I will mention that uh, I think uh, you need to put Hebrew the subtitles on the list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, Wes, I hope we can have two or three more questions. Sure. And Michelle's not got to speak. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. And if anybody has to leave, please don't feel bad. Okay. I need, I need to hear. Okay, go. Sorry. Um, so thank you so much. I think I cried like half of the movie. <laughs> it was a very good and, and moving um, movie. Like, I, mean, I, I joked that I wouldn't recommend my friends to watch it because it's just too sad. <laughs> um, but it was really beautiful and moving. Um, and of course all of your stories about Ukraine are also very touching and, and, and sad. Um, but I am Israeli, and we are direct. <laughs> and I have a question. I feel it's a, it's it's a fiction movie and um, about World War II, and you said it's a it's a it's a, it's a real story. Or um, I think it it, it betrays a, it shows Ukraine and Ukrainian people in in very specific aspect, which is probably very true to what is happening today in this war. But I'm. I don't know about the portraying of it, and I don't, I, maybe you didn't even presume to show the real Ukraine of all of Ukraine, Nians, during the war. Um, but my take on this was that um, maybe it shows like a new narrative about Second World War and the part that Ukrainians had in this war. So my question is, um, wouldn't it be make a little bit of sense to show? other parts or other um, ways other Ukrainians um, had in the World War II? Uh, I think we will do it. Uh, I, I think we just started because uh, do you know how many Ukrainian films was before uh, this war happened? I mean this war happened 2013 when they took Crimea. We have zero film Ukrainian in the cinema, zero. 
2019, before the COVID starts, we have 40 films in the cinema for the year. So from the zero to the 40 film from the year, we go like for the six years because we have, we was like, uh, the territory for the Russian guys to shoot the Russian movies with uh, cheap service of uh, Ukrainian guys. We don't have Ukrainian actors because we, we, we used to have only Russian actors. And uh, the film was popular if, if, only if Russians uh, take, take shots in Ukraine with some territories, but with Russian well-known actors because they have huge territory and the Russian language was only language all over the Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, Ukraine, Belarus, etc. To shoot in Ukrainian and to show whom. So it was no, no even um, the question because everybody understand that it's less of the money. So only film uh, which was produced by our president, I mean Zelensky, when he was comedian, was good, but he also shoot it in Russia and in sell it for the all territories. Uh, and to shoot Ukrainian films and to show it only in Ukraine, it's it's not about money. So you, you need to have some money from government, but you to shoot the good film, you need a lot of money and uh, you, you cannot take the people to the cinema because uh, in Ukraine they don't really believe in Ukrainian cinema. Was not really believe, but now we was working hard uh, uh, and I, I was a part of this hard work and uh, before the COVID start, we, we really have a good uh, box offices of Ukrainian films, uh, like really good, with local comedias, with local historical films. But uh, now because of the war, uh, the cinemas closed, And uh, but still we, we have, one week ago, we have a Ukrainian comedy premiere and we gather like uh, 10,000 people in the cinemas. When you say it's it's a true story based on a true story, is it was there really a Sophia and it was, the couple were they actual people or it's a, a composite you're putting together? Uh, it, we're putting together. Yeah. So I mean it's collective. Uh, That's what I and, and we put it in together. It was you did it so beautifully. It was so moving and so Thank very you so much. very suspenseful too. Yeah. Um, really suspenseful, but. Heart-wrenching. Thank you. So, Michelle, one of the angels um, to make all this happen. Um, Michelle, Michelle, um, well, you've lived for years in Ukraine. You speak Ukrainian, which is amazing. I do know people that are American that want to help. You know, they want to go to Ukraine or Poland or wherever and help. And I would, can you tell us a little bit about um, your last trip, you just came back from Lviv where you lived for years. Do you want to talk about that and maybe put it out in the audience if people want to do that? Yeah, what sure. What do you want to talk about? Mm. I would love to talk about that. And I also, um, or the film, everything. I want to speak to Gal's question a little bit because I think um, it's touching on some Jewish Ukrainian history, which is not always so pleasant, as we know. Mm -hmm. And um, growing up as I did with the Jewish narrative, I was personally lucky to escape some of the prejudice against Ukrainians that I think was prevalent in some Jewish communities. But, um, and I had the wonderful fortune of falling into Ukraine by accident and really falling in love with it and um, making some really deep, beautiful connections with people there. And I carried a lot with me. You know, my ancestors <coughs> fled from there also. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I began to tell my family that I was going to Ukraine, I, you know, people in my family and my community were a little skeptical, a little nervous, uncomfortable, thinking that my grandparents and their parents would not be thrilled had they been alive, that I was going back to the place that they fled from. Um, and I think this is a common narrative. I think that a lot of Jews here might be able to relate, American Jews who grew up with these things. Um, but I wanna say that um, yeah, there is some, some difficulty, there's some ugliness that happened between Jews and Ukrainians on both sides. Um, and it, it doesn't serve anybody well to pretend it never happened, but it's only part of the narrative. And it's, it's a narrative that I think has been exaggerated a bit. And I think stories like this that, that portray Ukrainians in positive light are really important because they, they serve to kind of counter some of the um, you know, the broader messages that some of us have grown up with. So I think that 
that this story is really important and there should be more stories like this that highlight you know, the ways that Ukrainians helped Jews during the war. There are plenty of stories about how Ukrainians collaborated with Nazis and that those stories did happen also, but it's not the whole story. It's not the whole picture. And especially now when Putin and Russia are trying to present this view of Ukrainians as nationalistic Nazis and it's, it's totally out of proportion, you know, I mean, there's more anti-Semitism in Cambridge than there is in Ukraine, I would say, and in any place, you know, of course there's anti-Semitism, there's neo-Nazis, you know, anywhere, but I think, I don't know, you can correct me, but I think the percentage of the nationalist parties in parliament is like, maybe, I don't even think they have enough to get into parliament, I think they need 3% and they don't have... Um, the, the Svoboda, yeah, they don't have anything, they don't so popular, and they, we know now that they are, was working for the Russian Federation in years. So they was they paid them money and they was fighting for like Ukrainian nationalism for, 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 because they make a good picture for the Russian TV shows, you know. So they 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 they, they did a big 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 big. Uh, yeah. You know, when I first went to Ukraine, I. I was in Lviv primarily. I saw a lot of the country, but I resided in, in Lviv. And there was, in the very beginning of my time there, I saw some anti-Semitic graffiti. However, it was pointed out to me that actually that was the propaganda, that was Russian propaganda, that was made, made Ukrainians look like they were neo-Nazis. So it's very complicated and nuanced. And again, not to, you know, erase the, the terrible things that did happen, but um, you know, it's, it's not the full picture. So I hope that speaks a little bit to what you're getting at. Um, and then about my, my trip just now, um, again, I was in Lviv where there was a relative sense of safety. People were going about their everyday lives, more or less. Um, and for me, it was, a very beautiful experience to be able to connect with my dear friends there and to convey their stories to people back here who were really interested in knowing what was happening there. And so there was this whole community of people that I was communicating with in America, primarily in other parts of Europe, um, and conveying their love and support to my friends in a very personal way and taking those stories from my friends back to this community in America. So for me, it was a really, a big privilege to be able to stand in that flow, to be in the middle of that flow. And, um, you know, I was just so touched by stories. You know, my, my best friend's brother was sent to the front when I was there, and seeing his family say goodbye to him um, was a particularly difficult moment. Hearing my friend, um, young woman, who was volunteering with paramedics in the worst areas, you know, the bloodiest areas on the front, her experience coming back to Lviv, where she's from, the trauma that she's carrying, and her insistence to retain her humanity, um, unlike the enemy, unlike you know people who are not valuing human lives at all. You know, she's insistent on, on retaining her humanity. That's the most important thing for her, despite all of the trauma and um, horrible, bloody things that she's seen. Um, you know, I would, people are, are, like Lisa was saying, everybody wants to know how to help, and I think I would echo um, what Vadim, right? Vlad. Vlad, 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 was saying, continue to express um, your desires to your representatives. I think that's important to do. It can feel like an anonymous thing, but it's really important to, for them to hear the repeated messages again and again. There's so much more that this country can do to provide life-saving defensive artillery and weapons to Ukraine. And um, as I've said to a lot of people, it feels funny for me to advocate for military support because I'm pretty much a pacifist, but in this situation, there's no better example of a just war and a just use of force. It's to protect lives of innocent people who are being killed um, daily. So I would say continue to advocate for more support faster support. Um, this could end a lot faster if, if Ukraine had the right equipment that they need. And to stay engaged and to be very, very astute about um, Russian propaganda, which is very insidious and very nuanced. And it's infiltrated our social media. 
It's infiltrated media all over the world, so try to stay astute to that. Michelle, I'm so sorry, this is amazing. First of all, this is why we do what we do. Um, this is why Westmead Cinema exists, why Boston Jewish Film exists, why we make movies, to be in these conversations, to ask questions that will challenge us in the best way and get us to think, and I'm kind of blown away by this conversation. I'm getting many signals that we have to go, because I know we want to say, I have to give Vladimir, you, you wanted to say something quickly before we go, and then we'll say a good night, okay? All right. Very quickly, uh, uh, I, why I involved in all this actively, very actively, uh, especially uh, as a representative of uh, Jewish community and as uh, one of the leaders of the Jewish community, uh, and uh, why we received even uh, bad uh, replies, what we are doing, bad thing to Russia, to Jews, to everybody else, we got everything. Uh, let me tell you a very quick story. Uh, I went through everything. In Soviet Union, in Soviet Ukraine, through uh, uh, public antisemitism, from government antisemitism, just toward me. Then was Ukrainian antisemitism against me and against my dance group, against our young people, uh, uh, and many, many other things. I left in 1996 uh, after a very bad accident uh, between me and uh, Ukrainian, real Ukrainian nationals, not like those were, <laughs> fake one. Uh, but uh, years came, I was several times visiting Ukraine after that. My last visit was in October uh, 2021 at 80th anniversary of, uh, anniversary of Babi Yar. I hope everybody knows what Babi Yar is. And there I saw absolutely different country, absolutely different people. People who doesn't know what anti-Semitism is. They live together, Jews, non-Jews, Ukrainians, Polish people, Poland people, Hungarians. Uh, I met somebody else, Uzbek. I don't know where they came from. <laughs> but they are Ukrainians, they speak Ukrainian. I, I talk to those people. I will, Ukrainians came to me with uh, information how bad was Soviet uh, uh, soldiers uh, uh, in Ukraine during the war, after the war. Like bad, uh, well, everybody was bad. Uh, uh, lots of lots of uh, different things. But I found absolutely different nation of people who have less anti-Semitism than I have here in the United States. Yeah. That's what happened. And uh, that's why I ask you to support Ukraine. And if you want, uh, do it simple way. For example, uh, last thing what we did, we bought goggles. Uh, eye protective goggles, what uh, shells we cannot uh, scratch and break. They're protecting eyes. Or simple t-shirts for uh, soldiers, what they will feel comfy on the uh, front line. You can buy them and send to Amazon, send to us and we will ship it to Ukraine. And now uh, I want only uh, Artyom, two quick, uh, uh, answer for two quick questions. It has to be quick because we're Very quick, very quick. I, I would love to say another <laughs> one, one thing, uh, the song in, uh, in the film, very famous melody of Tishmane Pidmanula. I heard that, those words, but with different melody, how it come up. <laughs> and in our, uh, uh, I think I was uh, shocked uh, with uh, the scene uh, when she, uh, 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 mother came after she saw her father, husband uh, uh, shot and started laundry. How that came up again? Uh, I, I, I will start from the second question. Um, our director is a woman, as you know, uh, Alessia, and um, we were thinking how to to demonstrate how to show how to show her pain, and uh, it was a long discussion. And uh, then somehow we come up that she needs to do something, something usual, and something not to. I mean, she was trying not to scare kids and to do something. What would 
every yeah. day. And, and daily, we was, yeah. yeah, daily, something daily. We, was, we have a lot of fights again, uh, <laughs> between together again this scene, because somebody of us uh, think that uh, nobody will understand what she has. And uh, always when um, the screening, I am always trying to, to watch the uh, audience to to watch how they feel it. And uh, am, I, am I right that everybody's... Uh, we understand completely. Yeah, completely understand. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, and the first... Uh, uh, first, so we are really Nazis. That's why we have a sound uh, producer. He is uh, Hussein. He's... Uh, uh, yeah, he was... It was really funny story that we have uh, Hussein who was uh, making all the movie and the national Ukrainian song Shedrick, you know, uh, Carol of the Bell. Uh, he he lived in, in, in Germany, actually, uh, and um, we're trying to use all Ukrainians' na na national songs. Also, this was, it's Cossack songs. Yeah, I know. It's, it's old Cossack songs and uh, uh, we want to, to show it. And, if you know the woman uh, who was playing um, um, the girl uh, Teresa, uh, the movie starts from her and the movie ends from her. She's very well-knowing uh, Russian, oh, sorry, uh, Ukrainian um, uh, singer. She's very well-knowing in in Canada. So she, she she's singing uh, Ukrainian songs, and in the end of the movie, there she, her song was the. Cossack system, it's Ukrainian uh, folk, uh, yeah, folk, folk, folk team. I think this is the first time since I've had this role of artistic director. It's impossible to stop this beautiful conversation. Um, well, first, thank you all. This is the first time we've kind of done this. Let's see a movie, go up pastry, and come back. And thank you all for sticking around.